Okay, so hey guys, my name is Quinston and today we are going to do something very fun and that is we are going to install React and Node together and uh, compile Node with the ECMAScript and ES6 and with Babel and, uh, and, and yeah, deploy that entire thing uh, with production build into Heroku and then run the application and then also transfer data between React and Node and how that the whole thing works. I'm going to show you how that works one by one. So first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, CD into documents and then create um, an express project with uh, the views set to not pug. You can literally find this on the express website, how to generate an express project. Uh, I'm going to set the view to none so that, you know, you don't have any, any weird stuff going on with the views because we're not going to use, um, you know, like we're not going to use node for the front end where you want to use like react for the front end so we don't need all of that yeah i'm just installing it npm install installing all the packages and then setting up code like starting visual studio code and yeah that's that's about it so now we're going to go into the app.js and just going to delete everything that we don't need there are some things we don't need in this project so we're just going to delete everything that you know compiles the front end uh, we don't need it so delete everything you can use it to build your node application right now for the purposes of this tutorial i don't need it so i'm going to delete that also i'm going to create a route uh it's going to be a wildcard catch-all route with a, just like a regular string like a json string something like i don't know result true or something or hello world let's let's send hello world back i'm sending hello world back and uh yeah now I'm going to go into the bin slash www folder because uh, that's where the whole thing is going to run from. I'm going to change the port number to 8080 because I don't want, so React runs on the same port as 3000 when you first install it. So I don't want them to clash. So I'm going to convert it to 8080 and also I'm going to do a www.js instead of www. But yeah, then I'm going to just start the server and uh, with npm start, that's in the start script and it just works. So you see that the, the whole thing just works, like the, the server just works out of the box. It's pretty pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you have any experience with Node, you know how to do this. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Now we're gonna configure it to run with Babel. So I'm gonna install a minus minus save um, with uh, Babel CLI initially, because that, that will give us all the tools to run Babel with Babel Node and Babel itself and um, output directory Babel com com compilation. And I'm gonna also set a preset to ENV there are multiple presets here. I'm using the Babel preset ENV. You can have Babel preset ES 2015, 2017, latest, there are different kinds of presets, stage two. You can use whatever you want. Um, I'm just using this one for this purposes. Now, I'm going to create a babel.rc file, a dot babel.rc file to basically tell Babel that these are the presets that I'm going to use. So I'm writing presets. And the preset that we're going to use over here is ENV, which is the one we just installed. Clearly just installed over here. Um, yeah. Um, then I'm going to use Babel node to compile the whole thing. So Babel node compilation makes a lot of sense because uh, then you can just compile it with Babel node. You don't have to do anything fancy or Babel build it initially. But this is one thing that you need to re remember is that Babel node will only be used in um, in development purposes. Babel node cannot be used, um, you know, in production. Do not use it in production. There's an article about it on their website. So read that. Um, yeah, so we are not going to use Babel node for productions. So that, that's why I named it dev start because I want, you know, yeah. So now I'm going to create an SRC file, like a SRC folder and basically transfer everything into the SRC folder. Uh, that is a node, node app. So whatever is node, what, what, whatever is express, everything I'm going to transfer. Okay. I didn't transfer view in there, but I'm going to delete everything anyway. So whatever I don't need, I'm going to delete because we already deleted from the app.js file. So we don't need anything else. So we just delete everything that we don't need. Literally, that's what I'm doing. Literally deleting everything that we don't need. Okay, the views is still there, but I'm, I think I'll delete it in the future, yeah. I'll uh, just delete it later. So um, then I'm gonna create a get ignore file because I don't want um, the, the node modules to be, you know, given like sent to git when I, you know, like when I push it to the repository. So I'm just gonna give a git ignore and it's gonna ignore node modules. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is uh, you're basically gonna go into package.json so yeah we're going to click the so now we're going to create all the start uh you know this the the reason we have to do this is we have to create the start script so script will basically give you all of the reasons of how to build the project so npm run build will basically build your project obviously we haven't written that script so building is basically taking your existing javascript code which you have written in the ecmascript format 
the ES6 format, and then that is being transpiled into your regular JavaScript, which Node understands, which the browser understands. And that whole building process is controlled by the whole structure that we're going to write right now. So if you see, uh, observe, we're writing node.build, but build the build directory does not exist. The build directory will exist only when you run npm run build. And even npm run build does not exist right now. So we're, we're also going to write that. So uh, we're just going to write build. And with the build, I'm going to write um, npm run clean and and um, and basically one and npm run babel build. So babel build is also a script that we haven't written, which I will write next. So babel build um, and that will contain some um, babel specific of code. That is, I'll write, uh, no, not npm run. No, 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 not that, not that. I'll write babel uh, minus d. Uh, dot slash build with we'll slash slash build slash source minus s um so minus s is the source map the source map basically takes everything from the source file converts it into your transpiled code and puts everything into build and minus d is the flag for like giving you the output files then we'll have the clean script which will basically be uh you know creating the build folder and destroying the build folder when it's when it's done when it's uh creating it so first of all, you will delete the, you know, RM minus RF, then you have the build folder and then and and MKDIR build. And try to build this whole thing. The reason I deleted that is because I'm running a Windows machine and RM minus RF does not work on a Windows machine. So might as well not use it. You can obviously write your own uh, Windows specific versions, uh, but I'm not going to do that. It's just too much work. So uh, I'm just going to delete this and uh, yeah, it says the syntax is incorrect, obviously, because it's yeah, obviously <laughs> so stupid sometimes. So I just clear this up and I'll just say npm start and it is what I'm showing you all of the mistakes that I'm doing because it just makes a lot of sense to show that. I mean, I haven't like written this in a script or something. I was just doing this on my own. Um, yeah, that is it. And once you do that, I think we should go to localhost and uh, 8080 and it just works. Yeah, everything works. There's no issues. And uh, yeah. And, and also the awesome part is you're running it from the build folder. So that's even better uh, because that's the production version as we, that we're going to use. Um, okay, delete this. And we're not using Babel node if you, if you observe, not using Babel node. The next thing is we need to uh, not do this. Actually, we need, do not need to change anything here. We need to create, I think, our React app. So now we're going to create the React app. And uh, we're going to create that in a folder called client. It's going to just write, create React app. If you don't know how to use it, just Google how to create the React app from there template and that is the client over there. So client is basically the folder from where the front end will be loaded up. Client is the folder from where the front end will contain. So the front end is our React app. So the React app is the front end. Here we're going to go back to the app.js file and basically send. So now we want to send data to the React app, right? So we're going to go into the app.js file and basically write some sort of data, which we will then fetch in our React app. That is what I'm writing over here. Just a simple result true. Uh, so once we go to that uh, that uh, particular API endpoint, we'll basically get those get get that JSON information. Um, the React the React app is still not finished installing. Okay, now it is done, and um, yeah, now it's done. We're going to CD client, which is the React app itself, and we're going to run npm start, which is going to start up the React app, and it's going to load up on port number three thousand localhost. And let's see if this works. Yeah, probably will. I hope it does work. Yes, it does work. And you can see the React app is loaded up. Next of all, what you want to do is you want to go to the app.js file inside the client, inside your React app. And basically, uh, you're writing uh, something to fetch your API endpoint from the node app. So we are basically trying to fetch uh, information that we just wrote the API data call from the React app. We're going to get it uh, from the node app and we're gonna display it in our React console. So writing fetch, then these are a standard React, uh, you know, I'm not teaching React right now, I'm just teaching you how to get it connected. So if you wanna learn more about this, you can check out the documentation for fetch and then um, you just have the you know regular uh, arrow functions which convert your response to JSON and then you basically console.log the JSON response. And this is gonna be done when your React app starts up. So yeah, now if we, go to uh, you know if you start up the react app if you start up the react app from here directly without setting up anything else and if you do uh you know in a console if you check the console what happens is it says it has an unexpected token the reason for that is because 
it doesn't get the data. So it's going to be like, yo, I don't have the data. What am I going to do now? So it's just like no data, man, no data, whatever. So no data here. Then you go to package of JSON and what you're going to do is inside. No, this is not the correct package of JSON. You have to go to the client. So there are two packages of JSON. Remember that one is for the node app. One is for the react app. So go to the react app package of JSON and add something called a proxy key field. A proxy key field will basically redirect react. So whenever you start with a fetch, which is a directly a slash and no, you know, previous qualifier, no, you no full URL It's going to go to this, this proxy over here and observe that we have 8080 there, 8080. And you know what 8080 is, that's the node app. So here I'm going to start the node app. So if you see, we are going to the root directory and starting the node app, npm start, uh, the node app is started. It gives us an error, obviously, because it says RMRF is not a windows command. You clear it up. You go to package of JSON and you clear and you delete that part over there because it's running on Windows. If you have Mac, it might work for you, but I'm running on Windows, so I'm not going to use that. I can write a Windows command, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, not right now, at least. It's just too much. <laughs> so, uh, plus, uh, I'm going to run this on Linux. Heroku runs Linux, so yeah. A CD client, um, go into npm start, just run it. So, I'm running two command, two terminals right now, if you observe. One, uh, one terminal is running the node uh the the node server and one app is running the react server so if you see there are two different servers running at the same time but we don't want that we want to run only one server so the next step would be to just run one single server and how are we, we going to do that is what we're going to do right now running this running one server just one server yeah so in order to run one server we're just going to delete the build we're going to go to everything and delete the build and we're going to also npm go to package of json and uh yeah we're gonna build this uh react so you're building both so in order to go to production you need to build both the apps build both the react app and the node app so right now we're building the react uh, react app to test on localhost i'm not going to de deploy the build you never deploy the build you let the build server create the build right but the build is created in the in the react so the react app has its build created and now i am going to uh, build my so I just delete the views. So I'm gonna build my um, you know I'm gonna build my uh, node app. But this time what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to serve the React front end with Node. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to set the public uh, so the public template directory, uh, the public directory. I'm gonna set it with um, client slash build, and then uh, so this, all of the static files in React are going to be. Uh, served up by the node app right now with that command over there. And now I'm going to try to, you know, set the wildcard to index.html. So with the same, same direction. So if you go into client and build, see there is an index.html there and so on and so forth. Uh, so that happens. And then once that is done, you can basically run only a single, a single, uh, you know, um, a single server NPM uh, start and uh, it will just work. I think this would work. Yeah, it's, it would definitely work. So it's building your node app. It's the, the React app is already built. So now if you go to localhost 8080, everything works. It works and it also serves your object up. So yeah, I think we are ready to deploy it on Heroku now. Um, so we can go and deploy it on Heroku. So for that, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a post build, Heroku post build. So a Heroku post build is a qualifier which Heroku knows to look for. And what it does is once the uh, building, uh, once the upload process is done, Heroku just runs this command. So it's npm install, oh sorry, um, it's npm, what is it? Uh, I forgot what it is. Hmm. I, just, I don't remember what it is anymore. It's cd client, yeah, I have to go into client, then I have to install uh, all the packages, and then I have to do an npm run build, which will build my React app. So we are doing this on the fly. We will not upload our build folder from from the local host, we will directly allow uh, the, the the actual server, which is running the whole thing, to do that in both sides. So we are doing that doing that for uh, both our um, Node app as well as the React app. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so yeah, now we're gonna try to clear it up. Uh, we're gonna do a, a, a git init, I think. No, no, no. I'm not. Okay. Do I have to do this? Uh, probably not. I'm gonna do a git init, and then I'm gonna do a Heroku create. So we'll create my Heroku, uh, you know, deployment server, uh, Heroku create, and then I'm, it's going to give me like the, the links to that, but I'm going to go to Heroku once and just, uh, copy one line. I always forget what line that is. So I'm going to go and copy it up uh, so that I can use that over there. Come on, Heroku load up, man. So I'm going to go to salty chamber 
<laughs> salt teaching, but oh my God. Deploy, uh, and I'm gonna copy this line over here and I'm gonna just put it in there. And that's what she said. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, that's what he said. <laughs> Stupid jokes. Then I'm gonna get add dots. So I'm gonna basically add all the files to the git repository. Then uh, I'm gonna commit it, initial commit or new commit. And I'm just gonna git push Heroku master. Um, just push everything in there and it will deploy itself. And let's see if this deploys, check everything once, if everything is proper. Uh, hopefully this will run. God help us, God help us all. Okay, let's see if this runs. Run this, git push and uh, if you see, uh, it also gives you everything. I think this will work. Let's just copy this and put it up there. And oh my God, it is working or not. Yes. Yes. Uh, control. Uh, yeah. AI check the object. Yes. Result true. It is working. It is working. The only thing left to do is we need to clean up, right? We need to clean up. So RM minus RF and, and, and that is about it. That is how this whole thing works build and 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 uh yeah we are we are done we are done with our deployment thanks for watching guys i will see you in the next video uh everything's available in the description down below you can go to the github repository download this project and use it yeah please like share and subscribe to the channel it helps out a lot and i will see you in the next video peace